What is going on YouTube? One LEX from here. Welcome back to another Tech Tuesday. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, obviously hit that thumbs up and then hit that little bell for notifications. Today's Tech Tuesday is all about your GoPro and really just how to get rid of that fisheye effect. Yes, you can set your GoPro to linear, but that sort of defeats the purpose of a GoPro. But there's stuff you can do in your software. I'm going to specifically be using Adobe Premiere Pro, but there's little things you could probably do in very basic editing software or even your other stuff that you have. There's got to be settings that are very similar. So let's get into that. All right, so I have two clips brought in here from the review I did of the 2021 Aprilia RS3 4 1100 factory. Beautiful bike. And we're going to kind of go through how to make these two clips not look so fisheye with a weird curves and everything. To really get a good idea of how that fisheye effect really plays into the GoPros is when you go down a straight road and you have the light poles on the outside that curve. See these guys? They curve a little bit. What we do is we can go to effects and again this is Premiere Pro and I'm sure there's like DaVinci and other stuff has the same thing. Go to lens. You'll notice that there's not a, like say you have a Hero 8 or Hero 9 or like I have Hero 7s. You only see like a 3 or 4 or a session or something like that. But the 4K wide is its starting point for this because I shot in 4K. So go to here, drop it in and you'll notice it crazy zooms in. What I've seen is the presets are a little aggressive on the lens distortion and removing it. I think that this looks fine, but there's other ones you'll notice will start to actually wave the other way, which is kind of strange. You don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to back this off a little bit, oh, wrong way. And I like to go right where that curve stops. And that's usually for me with the 4K when shooting in that is around negative 13 to negative 17 or 18, depending on you know what shot it is. But Right here, we're at negative 16 for the curvature. And what that does, it removes that curve around the outside. As you can see, now this cactus right here doesn't look quite as blown out and curvy as it does as standard. So there it is normal. And then we start to bring it in and the curve starts going away right about there. Again, this puts it at, I think it was negative 31 was what it initially starts in. It starts to give this weird wash to it. I don't like that. So again, we'll go to negative 16 and most that's actually negative 19. Either way, the curve starts to go away and this looks a lot more flat. The poles don't have that weird curve to them and it looks really good. Simple. Now a way around that with your software that may not have this type of capabilities to it is you can crop in Let's say we turn that off. You can still see those curves. What you can do is you can crop in, we'll say 120. And while it cuts some of the top of that off, you notice that some of the curving is gone because what you're doing is you're zooming in past the edges of the lens and it break, brings out those aberrations, the curves that you get from you know, your lens here. Again, simple set, you can zoom in. I'd say 130 is probably as far as I'd go with your zooming because you'll start to lose your sharpness, you'll start to lose the clarity of your image. Like even though it's 4K, if you start doing 150, you'll notice it starts to get a little blurry. You don't want that. So we'll go back. And again, we'll punch that up to 119. Voila! Really good. Now, I use the GoPro for a lot of B roll and still you still get that weird fish islands like this front of the bike just looks silly and curvy and doesn't look good it doesn't look like it's done with a really good camera because they're usually nice and deep and don't have any weird curves to them so again we'll take that curve oh, where we go we'll take that little setting put on there and see how it it kind of crops in and blows it up I still think that's too much, so we'll tone it down a smidge and go right there. And right in this corner back here, you'll notice the difference. You see how you see the windows curve, and you see the line of the building not be straight anymore. So we go to negative 20, 
it crops in, but also brings the lens and brings the actual curvature of that image out a little bit. So now we don't have any weird curves up here in this little corner. The top level line right here, that's the tricky part when you use your GoPro B-roll, when you have very straight lines that are very obvious that they're being curved, uh, you kind of have to pay attention to that and play with it in your software. And we could, like I said, 31 is there, but what that does, it, it actually elongates the nose here. And you can tell that that's this is too much. So let's just again back that off. And the front end looks pretty good. And as we pan across, yeah, that's looking good. And you know, the 2021 RSV4 has these ridiculous winglets to them. So if you put a negative 31, where it starts, it may look even longer because you see how it starts to distort as we go back and forth. You see that distortion happen. And you'll notice that as well on the standard when you bring it in, you notice that distortion happen as well because it just rounds the front end way too much. And again, you see all these lines start to look curved. Go back to our negative 20 and it's really a play with thing. You kind of have to tweak it here and there. Like I said, Adobe Pro really gives a good base. I wouldn't leave it on that setting because obviously it's not quite right. You still will need to tweak it. But as we pan back and forth, the distortion really doesn't come into play anymore. It looks true to form, it's true to how the eye looks. And as you see, none of these lines over on the door over here, on this window, on that pillar, or even down here on the stones seem to be curved out. The other problem you'll notice is if you watch these guys, as I bring this up again to where Adobe Premiere wants it, you see how it starts to just wash them out and make them almost curve back around on themselves. Like I said, it's a trial and error. You just kind of play with it. Like I said, 20, negative 20 for this setup seems pretty good as far as the curvature goes. Again, as I mentioned before on the other one, if you crop in, it'll help. It's a little trickier when you have a lot of lines to follow, but for B-roll, you can do 130 and it'll look good still. Just when you actually film it, keep in mind that you're probably gonna end up doing this. So film it a little further back than what you're trying to actually capture. That way when you crop in, what you're trying to do is right where it needs to be. Just a little forethought goes a long way, especially when you know how you're gonna edit. But yeah, you crop in negative 30. The lines aren't quite as warped. Unfortunately, the crop really only does the outside edges. It doesn't quite do the center and top part of it. Because that's what I'm saying, like when you look at it, it bubbles everything from center out. So cropping in doesn't get rid of the center part, just kind of gets rid of those outer edges that are super obvious. Whereas the center is a little less, just again, because you're looking at the bite more so than the lines above or below it. But yeah, that's how you do some lens correction using Adobe Premiere Pro. Again, if you want to just use something simple and doesn't your software doesn't have the lens distortion feature on it, if you crop in a certain percentage to where your image is still good, and it's not blurry, that's what I would suggest. But that's really it. Thank you for checking in on this Tech Tuesday. I hope you guys learned something good. It's trial and error is what I do. Just kind of play around with it and find out what works. But with that, you all have a good one. I'm out.